Back in 2020, 50 countries around the world signed an agreement to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. But how much do you know about their efforts? Join me on a journey of discovery behind the scenes to find out what Geely has been doing since long before that agreement was signed. You join me here today in the Chinese province of Guizhou and we're on the hunt for some alcohol. No, not the world famous Baijiu or Mao Tai as you may know it, which originates from this region, but rather methanol. We're here in the beautiful city of Guiyang, the largest, if not the only, methanol ecosystem in all of China. We're going to go deeper under the surface to find out why methanol is so prominent here and exactly what Geely has to do with it. Behind me you'll see a fuel station, but this fuel station is unlike most of the fuel stations that you will find in China. And that's because right over at the back you'll see a pump labelled M100. That means that the pump serves methanol fuel. And while that's rare across most of China, here in Guiyang, it's a very frequent sighting. The number one reason for that is the city's taxi fleet, over 90% of which runs on methanol, like this car, the Geely M Grand M100. In fact, methanol taxis have been running around Guiyang since 2015 and have driven more than 10 billion kilometers in total. But what do the taxi drivers themselves think about these methanol M Grands and the benefits that they bring? Best the only way to find out is to hail one for ourselves and ask them. So how does the overall performance of this car compare to a traditional petrol car? So how much does it cost to run the car for a week? And how does that cost compare to the price of running a traditional petrol car? So how beneficial is it that you can run the car on both petrol and on methanol as well? So how beneficial is it to have a large trunk in this car as opposed to on the LNG gas cars where often the gas tank takes up a lot of space in the boot? So Okay, so while our driver gets his daily refill of methanol, He's already told us about the economical and practical benefits that the M100 hybrid brings to the drivers of Guiyang. However, personally, I like to drive, so let's go and try one out for ourselves.
Okay, so we've tried out the hybrid as a passenger and we've spoken to the taxi drivers, but what better way to get a feel for this car than to take it for a drive here, right outside the factory where this one has just been made on the test track. Let's give it a go. So we're gonna take the Geely M Grand M100 Hybrid out for a drive to get an idea of how the powertrain works in and how it feels to actually drive. So once we get going, the moment it's totally quiet, we're in full EV mode and the engine hasn't kicked in. At that point, you just hear the engine kick in. So it's actually, it's very seamless. It's a little bit louder, obviously, because everything's louder than an electric powertrain, but it was totally seamless in how it worked. Now at this point, I understand it's not driving the wheels, which means that it shouldn't really make any change to the way that it drives. And actually, it does feel fairly rapid. It does feel pretty quick. Now the motor actually has pretty much the same output figures as the engine and the engine is never driving on its own, it's only driving with the, with the electric motor. So that's when you go into overtake mode, if we start to accelerate now, that's when you feel all the power coming in, you get the combination of the electric motor and the engine together and it really feels, that's quite beneficial actually, if, you're, if you need to do a quick overtake in town or you're out on the motorway, that's when it will really start to be quite useful and actually it doesn't actually feel that bad to drive either despite the fact that it's a fairly basic car on the whole but now we're back down at 40 kilometers per hour see all the sounds gone again we're back into full electric mode so really for normal driving around town if you're driving within the speed limit the chances are it's going to be a very pleasant driving experience very very quiet and comfortable so it's really cool actually very seamless and actually it's not a bad car to be in it's pretty attractive we've got this quite cool green stuff here on the dashboard to show that it's the the green version and because this is likely most likely going to be going out into the the city over there to be a taxi for the rest of its life cool the introduction of methanol taxis here in guayang has helped to reduce the city's reliance on oil by eight percent and they're part of a much wider initiative to help preserve the city's beautiful natural landscape and also to reduce traffic pollution. Geely's involvement in methanol isn't just limited to taxis and passenger vehicles. In fact, their exploration into methanol dates back to 2005. But things took a more serious turn when they invested in a little-known Icelandic company, Carbon Recycling International, in 2015. At this factory, on the outskirts of Reykjavik, they take carbon dioxide collected from the naturally occurring volcanic activity on Iceland and turn it into methanol fuel. Inspired by this, and the possibility to perform a similar act with the unwanted carbon dioxide emissions from China's heavy industry, Geely brought this technology over to China and built the first carbon dioxide to methanol recycling plants in the country, in Anyang. Every year, the plant captures 160,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions from industrial processes and converts them into 110,000 tonnes of methanol. So while using methanol as a fuel in cars still produces carbon dioxide, the process means that carbon dioxide only enters the atmosphere once, rather than twice, if petrol cars were used. In addition, methanol is a much cleaner burning fuel, emitting 99% less sulfur oxides, 60% less nitrogen oxides, and produces 75% less particulate matter. In fact, CO2 emissions on first generation M Grand M100s were tested at just 46 grams per kilometer, which compares to 116.3 grams per kilometer for the average car in Europe in 2022. But Geely isn't limiting this technology to just taxis and passenger vehicles. They're extending it to trucks too, like this one here. These trucks are currently operating in several cities across China. In some cases, benefiting from the methanol infrastructure being built at ports, since the fuel is increasingly being used for ships to reduce CO2 emissions in the shipping industry. So while the world steadily transitions to cleaner and ideally emission-free fuel sources, Geely's pioneering use of carbon recycling and methanol-powered vehicles shows that there are meaningful alternatives that we can utilize today to help bridge the gap and bring about significant net reductions in CO2 and other harmful emissions.